It's currently now quarter past midnight. Uh, I'm on watch. Doing part of our piracy watch. After my watch, three o'clock, try to get to bed, depending on if we have any transfers throughout the evening, like we do this evening. Early morning hours in the Gulf of Oman, Robert Hansel and a small team are shuttling weapons and security guards to a nearby container ship. It's headed through one of the most dangerous shipping routes in the world, the waters off the coast of Somalia. In a short time, they're headed back to home base, the MNG Resolution, a floating armory 25 miles from the coast of the United Arab Emirates. The Resolution stores weapons for private maritime security companies who protect ships crossing the high-risk area of the Indian Ocean. We saw that floating armories were being done actually quite badly and mostly illegally, and we felt that we could leg legitimize that part of the maritime security industry. The Resolution and at least half a dozen other armories in the Gulf of Oman are part of a growing industry. Shippers began using armed guards to protect their cargo and crew after a spate of Somali pirate attacks several years ago. But most countries won't let arms into their ports, so the guns must be stashed offshore on ships like the Resolution. Once the security team and their guns are on board, the Resolution staff carefully inspect and log in the weapons. Uniform Echo 5 The teams usually bring a kit on, a full kit, which could be full weapons, ammunition, plus all their uh, ancillaries, and then they will take usually take those off. So once they're mustered on, they will stay on board for three to five days, and then they'll get another transit. We will then muster their kit again and take them, take them off. Transits can cost between $1,500 and $5,000. In 2013, the international shipping industry spent about $1 billion on armed guards and equipment in the Indian Ocean. Critics say the armories are a potential target for attacks themselves, and governments of nearby coastal nations are wary of their presence, fearing they present a security risk. There are few regulations in the international waters where these armories operate, and no official body oversees them. But Resolution staff of former British military say they take more precautions than many of their competitors. I'm the team leader of the four-man security team, which we are armed, um, and we do a security watch for 24 hours. So everybody knows the routine. If there is somebody getting too close, we should have a mile radius. Nobody should come into that. In addition to storing weapons for private security teams, the armories also serve as hotels at sea for the off-duty guards. Some of the floating armories um, should really be sunk to the bottom of the ocean, the state of them. Um, this is the first time I've, I've, I've come on to a marine resolution. Uh, very happy with it so far. It's a good setup, very professional compared to uh, previous ones I've been on. On the resolution, off-duty guards who normally combat piracy are more concerned with fighting boredom, thanks in part to their own success. Attacks in the high-risk area have fallen significantly in the past two years. The last hijacking and ransom of a merchant vessel in the Indian Ocean was in 2012. On this day, those bunking on the resolution say it's a pretty good place to stay. The Wi-Fi works, the food is good, and there's a gym. I would say probably 99.9% .9 of the armories in this area don't have any sort of gym equipment on them. If you're here for a few days or a week, you try to get yourself into a routine, you know, you, you, you're in a small cabin uh, with three other guys, tension can build after a few days. The gym is almost like a kind of escapism to relax for a period of time. Still, it's no five-star hotel. Guards sleep six to nine in a cabin, and luggage has to be stored in racks out on deck to save space. But for the men running the resolution, there's not much time to dwell on comfort. Days can quickly turn into nights, leaving little time for sleep. We have had days where we've had 10 to 12 transfers in a day, and they are hard because they could be spread out, say one every two hours. There's no time for downtime over a 24 hour period. All part of the routine in this thriving industry. One the MNG crew members say compensates them well for their eight week rotations at sea. You are rewarded for your time away. 